Μελενεθελήν είμαι. Με ακούσετε. Ναι. ναι. Είμαι από τη Γαλλία, αλλά δουλεύω. Ζω και δουλεύω στην Κύπρο για, για πολλά χρόνια τώρα. I'm not a graphic designer. Εγώ δουλεύω στην άλλη πλευρά. Και να σα πω κάποια πράγματα που ελπίζω να σα βοηθήσω. Όχι. Δεν θα κάνω με το clicker. How to say when you're creative? Okay, uh, I'm gonna say it in English. I've been working for Okay, I've been working for many companies. I've been working in for 15 years, basically, in Cyprus and uh, and abroad for companies selling uh, as a marketeer, as a marketing manager, as a brand manager for companies um, selling uh, different brands such as Famous Grouse Whiskey or uh, Yves Rocher Stagalindica. Uh, basically, I've been working with a lot of advertising agency and graphic designers. So I know the other side, basically, of the work, and I want to give you my perspective, and hopefully this is going to help you uh, in your work. Many times when you work with the advertising agency or with graphic designer, as a client, of course, uh, you um, there is a problem in the communication. Sometimes the graphic designer are taking things uh, maybe too literally. And uh, many times the client doesn't understand what the graphic designer wants to uh, wants to achieve. For the past two years, I'm working for Candy Jar, which is an advertising agency. I'm working with graphic designer. I'm working with uh, creative people, basically. And I've learned how it is on the other side and how it is difficult from the the creative part. So today, I'm going to tell you about the bitter truth. <laughs> I hope I'm not going to hurt anybody's feeling. <laughs> I'm going to talk about what I call the sweet mix, which is basically when you achieve a great relationship between the client and the, the creative people, the graphic designer, or the advertising agency. And add butter to the mix. This is the juicy part. It's about upselling. It's about cross-selling. It's about making more money. I'm a left brain, so I talk about business and I talk about money. Um, so, the first thing, and that I learned working for Candy Jar uh, with uh, my boss, basically, who is uh, our great creative director. Do not take things personally. <laughs> Control your temper. This is a special dedication to you, Valeria. <laughs> basically, it's your work that is being reviewed. I mean, when you're sitting on the shoes of the graphic designer, in the shoes of the graphic designer, you understand better how uh, they, they spend a lot of time doing their work and they're hearing a lot of hurtful comments sometimes from the client that doesn't understand what's going on. So first of all, don't take things personally. This is your work. This is not you. Customers, they care about their business. They are corporate oriented. And most of the time, they don't have education as graphic designers, even if they always think they are graphic designers. I mean, they're going to ask you to move the line three times or to make it more centered or whatever they're going to come up with. They think they have, the, they have solid design. And they also like to say, um, this is just you know a small change. It's going to take two minutes. And at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Um, you have to remember, though, that you're a creative at a service of a client, basically. You are here to help a business to communicate something, a business or political cause or a social cause. You're here to actually add a service of something. 
you're not just doing art for the sake of art and basically selling something. That's very important. Uh, we're going to see later on how you can how you can change that. Your work is probably reviewed by somebody that is not from the creative field. And how many times, now that I work on the other side, I'm hearing the client saying, but why did you put it like that? Why did you, put the, why did you choose that footage? Why did you actually uh, choose that layout? Uh, and probably the most creative part is the part, I mean, not probably, a lot of times the most creative part is the part that the client will actually have, have some issue to accept. And we're gonna see how we can, we can help in that. Another thing that is extremely important. I mean, I've been, I've been there. You need to find the right decision makers. Uh, many, I mean, a lot of times with clients, with, organi with big organization, you get a brief, you get a project, you're going with a project, and at the end of the day, I mean, people are actually not happy with what you've been, uh, what been do you've been presenting, and you're being crushed. Communication is not always straightforward in an organization. So, to avoid disappointments, yours and your clients, you need to question the process. I mean, that's again an, an advice from, from my side that I've been working on the other side. You need to know, you need to make sure, and sometimes it's not that straightforward, you know, you're not gonna ask sometimes blank questions, but you need to do your homework and find out who is actually the person that is gonna review. I mean, in a few weeks, we're going to have a project, we're going to have a, a presentation to make to uh, hopefully win a contest. I mean, my job is going to be to find out who is going to be present and to do some research about them, to know a little bit who is going to actually judge our work. Um, and also, sometimes there is a room full of people and you have one person that has the final say, even if you know, the, they are asking the opinion of everybody. At the end of the day, maybe it's the opinion of, of one person that is uh, actually important. So try to figure out that. Have everything in written. That's that's my uh, advice. When you have something in written, it doesn't mean that it's going to change things. But with time, things can improve because they're going to actually the client will understand better. You know what you're trying to uh, to achieve. And at the end of the day, it might be it might understand that is not clear when it's actually giving his instructions. Stick to the brief. Of course, every rule exists and can be broken, but a brief is made of objectives, deliverables, budget, and a deadline. So you have to respect that. You have to actually, the deadline is the most important thing because Again, you're a lot of times working for people that are that are in the business world. They have a lot of things to think about. They have reports, they have deadlines, they have monthly meetings. The deadline for them is, uh, is crazy. They want to make sure that you're working on them and on their project and only on their project. Nobody else. The budget is important, but we're going to see how we, could, uh, we can actually work on that. And if they ask you something, you have to deliver something. Oh, also, as I said, every rule is here to be, uh, can be broken. There are some, um, I mean, this is the basic things. If they have asked you something, you have to deliver. However, you can come up with something else, and that's what we're going to see later on in the upset part. When you're selling your, your creativity, basically, it is very important to be able to explain it, to be, exp and be able to explain why you actually chose that direction, why you chose that graphic, why you chose that um, medium. And sometimes, you know, it takes maybe to allocate 10 minutes of your time to actually educate your client, so basically he will understand what he's about to see. You have studied, I mean, your creative, your graphic designers or, or working on other uh, feeds. The client thinks he does know, but he doesn't basically. So sometimes when he's about to, to see something that is uh, disruptive, you need to make sure that, you know, you, you also can tell him more in Cyprus. You can also tell him that, um, give him example of what's happening abroad. It's happening abroad, it's working abroad, it can be done here as well. Price when you work, okay? Yes, we're coming out from a crisis. But it's very important to educate our clients on that. I was guilty on that when I was working on the other side, when I was a marketeer, 
working with graphic designers or with other advertising agencies. Um, basically, yes, you want to be, you want, you know, you want to basically get uh, clients, but a low price, first of all, might not be sustainable. If you price yourself low, it's going to be difficult to increase your price, or even impossible. And a low price might be synonym of, synonym of low quality. Um, I'm hearing that I'm, I'm, because I come from the corporate world, I have a lot of people in, around me that also work in companies, and they do not know, basically, the difference. I mean, they don't know about production value, they don't know about, they, they are not educated to understand that. No, a picture that was taken that was taken with a with a phone uh, is not the same as it as you know as when at his, if it's been done by somebody that is a professional. I mean that's why we have professional photographers. Um, that they need to be educated. They need to see the value and they need to see the return on their investment because that's their language. Know when to compromise. Do not compromise your vision, but be ready to compromise the execution. If the client wants a pink sweater, you're gonna have to make it pink. What do I mean by that? Um, the client is gonna come with a brief, and sometimes they have a very, in our field, in the advertising agency, they have a very, very uh, straightforward um, idea of what they want. They're gonna come and they're gonna say, we want a radio spot, we want a flyer, we want something like that. What we're doing, basically, is also knowing much, knowing, we're going to see that after, but it's basically questioning as well. Learning about the client, making some research, really understanding the problem they want to, uh, to address. And that's why I'm saying do not compromise your vision. Because maybe what they're asking is not going to, uh, I mean, you're going to deliver it, but it's not going to answer the issue. So that's important to have this conversation. Of course, it doesn't happen from day one, but it's about building a relationship. The sweet mix, that's the relationship with the client, the ideal relationship with the client. Team up with your client, all right? Do not see your client as a project, but see him as a whole, basically. So, learn about your client. Educate your clients. They don't know? Show them. Teach them. Explain to them. Explain to them that, yes, it takes time. No, it cannot be done in, in, in one minute. Yes, it has, a, it has a cost. It has a price. You and your client are on, on the same time, side. This is something that I need to, rem to remind myself. Because we don't speak the same language initially, but we need to. So it's about making a genuine connection and being an addition to the client, being an addition to their team. The more you research, the more you will be able to identify opportunities. How are you sure you understand your, your client? As we were talking before, uh, a client might have a very specific idea of what they want, but it might not be what they need. So the more you actually will research, the more you will actually question, the better you, uh, the better chances you have to uh, to find out. Propose a solution to a problem. Don't just be executing what they are asking you. All right. I will um, give you an example. Um, or yeah, later on. And speak the lingo of your client. This means that. You need to become one of your clients. Um, when I was working in the drink industry, we have specific codes, the way we were talking. We have specific words that we were using. When I was working in the, in the um, cosmetic industry, the same thing. You're not, just, um, you're not just here to execute. You're here to take part of the conversation. Do I make sense or Because <laughs> everybody is, you know, there is a lot of, I don't know what is talking and everything, so. Um, add butter to the mix, upsell or cross sell. Okay, that's the most interesting part for me. Okay, we said before when you have a brief, you have to deliver that. Okay, yes, they want something specific. If you don't answer the, the, what they ask, you're out. Um, again, make sure that the person that is asking knows what 
but at the end of the day, the, the, the final decision maker is going to review, approve, or disapprove. However, be ambitious. Uh, we're requested the other day, something very simple, we're requested the other day to make a um, flyer with recipes. Okay, the client came and they asked, make a flyer with recipes. We had a conversation about it, and we, we just suggested that. Why don't we do a um, recipe um, booklet, basically? A recipe booklet. Because we thought that people that are actually cooking would like to have something that would be a little bit uh, glossy, a little bit nicer that they will keep. And of course, the content uh, is important as well, but the format is very important. We're not, well, I'm not saying here, you know, to sell something that the client doesn't need. I'm here saying that you need to suggest something that people, uh, that your client might find useful at the end of the day and that they will have a return on investment. A flyer might be something for, for this specific client that people will look at it and maybe throw it, whereas a recipe book might be something that, oh, yeah, I want to try this recipe, I want to try that one. So I'm going to go back and go back and then I'm going to see the brand and I'm going to see the, the product. Of, uh, of the client, basically. And another thing is that you, you don't lose anything by suggesting something else, okay? You're, you're starting a conversation, and there are two things that can happen from here. The first thing is that the client is going to understand where you can take his business, so he's going to understand the value of it, basically, your, the value of your relationship with him. And the second thing, he might be actually interested in the, in the solution. When we talk about cross-selling, for example, is that you have a client again and they ask you for a specific task. And you know, because you have done your research, because you have team up with your client, you realize that that client, maybe they need um, to change. I mean, maybe you're looking at, the, they have a fleet of cars, of van, and they need an, and they need an upgrade. You can suggest something about it. You can, see, you can show them example. You can show them your work. And maybe they're going to say, you know what, it's out of my budget, it's not my priority. Fair enough, but maybe it will be, you know, something that they will program and they will want to do in the, in the, in a, at a later stage. So, don't be afraid to be ambitious for that. So basically, when you're being creative, being crea be creative when you design, and be creative also when you say, don't be just uh, um, a tool for your client. Be join the conversation. Be part of the conversation. Questions and uh, open your mind basically to their business and to their their problems. Is there any questions? Que borona mi liso que na bando dice artista elinica para lo que pola que es por lo que me na na mi liso está tan rica. A la fe está na ego to to feedback sa si cada. En el disco no. Is que si me tomo peladi? Si no me? Poli. Hola, está. Que eso es el error. Si me tomo una cara de que se quedó, me voy a preguntar. Si me tomo una cara de que se quedó, me voy a preguntar. Y hoy me cae que se ha quedado esa plantación en amor. Αλλά εφόσον είσαι στην Κύπρο 15 χρόνια, ξέρει πολύ καλό ότι όλα αυτά ή τα περισσότερα είναι απλώ. Σωστούς, σωστή τρόπη να γίνεται μια δουλειά. Και εκεί δώσουμε μια άλλη εντύπωση. Σωστό. Ο πελάτη είναι ο Θεό και στο Θεό δεν βάζουμε το Θεό. Αυτό θα το πω αργότερα, αλλά είναι ναι. πολύ καλή προσέγγιση και μακάρι να ήταν τα πράγματα όσα έχουν εκεί να έχουν και στην πραγματικότητα την Κυπριακή. Θέλω, θέλω να απαντήσω στο τούτο, επειδή είμαστε όντω 15 χρόνια εδώ και όντω είναι δύσκολο και όντω το ζούμε κάθε μέρα. Αλλά όπω είπα για το pricing, σκεφτήκαμε κάποτε τα industries, δηλαδή φταίνει και το industry, ότι ε, ένα παράδειγμα που χρησιμοποιεί πάρα πολύ συχνά ο Eh, ότι ένα λογιστή όταν θα, δηλαδή θα, θα σου κάνει κάποιε υπηρεσίε και δεν θα κάνουν question την τιμή. Ναι, οκ, είναι σημαντικό, είναι αυτή τη τιμή. Όμω επειδή δεν υπάρχει education από την πλευρά του πελάτη, δεν καταλαβαίνει για design, δεν καταλαβαίνει για marketing, δεν καταλαβαίνει για διαφήμιση, και πρέπει, είναι, μια, είναι δύσκολο, αλλά είναι μια προσπάθεια 
Tienen algo muy parecido a la autopipífisis, simple de la de su industrias, que es el autopucanum, que no me hizo autopucan ni al que le quiero en el parágrafo sistemático, no hay ni perónum, no hay catalán ni un cosmos, y autopucanum es de la monografía que es de la monografía de la monografía. Ahora, ¿qué es la acción que ha nacido la pramada? Que es lo que ha nacido el hombre que tiene un pelado de un pelado, y por las flores, we take that for granted as clients, and that's also up to us to to make the change. And That's very really true, yeah, of course. One step at a time. Now, having you said all that, and now, mm -hmm. this uh, place should be filled up with clients and exactly. designers, yes. basically, because yes. they have the problem. Yes. It's not the designers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, so what do you do in, in case your client doesn't compromise price-wise with you? Because as it turned out, uh, as a freelancer, yeah. I, it's like a, I can't get a decent job in Cyprus mm -hmm. because uh, it seems that all the clients basically don't re uh, respect the my work, the... Yeah. You know, yeah. how, how can I present the, my quality of work? Yes, this is what I want to say. There are two problems. The first problem is that we have to do a miss and creative. That is, if we can compromise, we will have to do a lot Μετά, α πούμε, αν κάποιον που κάνει αυτό που κάνει, δεν, δεν, που κάνει εσύ, δεν, δεν νομίζω ότι είσαστε πάρα πολύ στην Κύπρο, δεν ξέρω. Ε, αν εσύ έχει ένα αρχή τιμή και ο άλλο το κάνει μισή τιμή, that's a problem. It's, it's destroying the market. So it's something that, you know, and that's why this community is important because you can actually, it's not everybody needs to win it's not just me okay I'm, I'm proposing the same service half price and then I'm, I'm basically destroying the market so the first is it's the first thing is as a community to kind of talk about it and and uh, and be aligned I mean and that's why everybody, you know it's, it's very good because everybody is going to know each other and, and and should be at the same level the other thing is about educating the clients now when cash is tight of course it's difficult but you need to draw a line. You need to draw a line and not to go with clients that don't, that don't respect what you're doing. And also, I mean, the other day, I was at a, at a meeting with a client that is very, very, very comfortable with us. Too comfortable. And at some point, they were talking about a brochure. It was a project. They were talking about a brochure that this year they're not going to do with us. And I, I, I mean, I said it. I said, OK, so you're not going to do with us? Fine, fine, but you know, I don't want to. Let's discuss about the things we're going to do. It's it's about also drawing. It's about self-respect as well, and to be and, and to let them know that we're not at your uh, disposal. I know it's easy to say, but it's about it's it's about um, making a change as a community, basically. That's that's um, that's the first step. I don't know if I gave you some. Uh... Yeah, yeah. It seems that in Cyprus, uh, the clients don't mind about quality. They want the cheapest. Yes. Product. Yes. So I guess if I want to make a decent living, I have to go, you know. That's what we're saying. Compromise. Don't, part of the country. don't compromise your. Yes, I understand. Don't compromise your vision. And sometimes it's about, as we say, it's about educating the client, and it's about showing him crap and showing him a good thing. And you know, and and it's about. Uh, sometimes you you have to make him feel bad to understand. I mean, you want that? Okay, that costs that much. This is what you want to do. Of course, that's why I, I say we, we need to have a relationship with a client because when you have a relationship, you're more comfortable. But it's not not a hisa pedi gumenta. Then it's not a hisa pedi pro timera enoite. So it's about educating and and, and showing. Ali, uh, what do you see? Yasu Selim. Yes. Ali Nakhari. Se kana to LinkedIn para kano. Kano kana. Ερώτηση θα μπορούσε να μα προτείνει ενδεχομένω να τρέχουμε σε κάποιο post από το Graphic Stories κάποια βιβλιογραφία για όλα αυτά από τη μεριά 
μαρκετήρ ή θα μας έχουν βέβαια να διαβάσουμε. Ναι, μπορώ φυσικά. Έτσι για να βγουν από το Ναι, μπορώ φυσικά επειδή όπως είπα ότι είναι... Για μένα είναι εύκολο επειδή το background μου είναι business, είναι marketing, είναι sales, είναι finance, δηλαδή και δουλεύα για πολλά boxy εταιρείες ακόμα και χάρηκα πάρα πολύ που του δώνει το παρελθόν και ήρθα στο του κόσμου σας, αλλά για μένα τούτο είναι στο DNA μου, όμως υπάρχει και ακόμα μπορώ να βρω tutorial αν θέλεις, δηλαδή για το sales negotiation, επειδή αυτό που έλεγα στην αρχή όταν δουλεύα με graphic designer κάποτε έστειλα ένα brief και ήταν, ξέρεις, α, β, α, και ο designer πολλά καλά μου έκανε α, β, α, γ. Μπορεί όμως να ζητήσει Περισσότερα, περισσότερε πληροφορίε, να έχει το περίβαλλον, να καταλαβαίνει, να κάνει το research για την εταιρεία κτλ. Και, και να, να δει, επειδή έχετε τόσο πολλά πράγματα που μπορείτε να κάνετε. Mm -hmm. Σωστό. Το πάνω. Απόλυτα. Το πάνω. Το πάνω. Τότε είναι να, να βλέπετε το, το client σαν ένα pool of opportunities. Αυτό. Okay. Κάτι άλλο. Ή. Ξεφύγει. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ, Σελήνη.